Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to Panther Style, September 9th, 2021. We're so excited that you are joining us today and that we hope that you've had a um, opportunity to you know, check in with your children, see how they're doing, ask them about their bold practice and if they're doing it at school. Um, it is our way of helping everybody get grounded and centered in mindfulness. I want to introduce you to you again, our wonderful um, AP, Mr. Lister Looker. Thank you for joining us again today, Mr. Lister Looker. Hello, everybody. All right, let's get started. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us at Back to School Night. Um, when I last looked, we had well over 400 and plus um, parents who were able to access our introductory video on this Panther channel. Um, plus many parents went to the um, school's website and on the school's website, we have our teacher class information under the staff page. And all you have to do is click any one of those names. Um, they still have their videos up. Those videos are going to be available 24 seven. So, um, you know, if you haven't had a chance to go check them out, please, please do. Um, also, just to let you know, those pages are updated as needed. So if a teacher is switching every quarter their class and um, new Google Classroom numbers need to go up, that's where you're going to go to. Um, it is um, updated in real time. Um, just a quick reminder, we are still um, practicing all of the safety protocols at, that Desert Sands Unified School District has required us to follow. Um, students are doing an excellent job of remembering to stay masked inside at all times. Masks outside are not required, um, but we do encourage students to social distance. Um, we want students to be healthy and safe. Teachers are spending a lot of time making sure um, students are hand sanitizing and cleaning down supplies. So hand washing is important to us. So anything we can do to help minimize um, the spread of COVID, but also now um, the spread of regular flus and colds and the normal stuff that comes along with us school. Um, I also wanna encourage all of our parents to please make sure that their children are coming to school with their IDs. Um, it, it's very important that they have their IDs on campus. And they get a Panther point, or excuse me, a hero point for being prepared. So that's a bonus. It is a bonus. That's it's a fabulous program. I've had quite a few questions about contact tracing and I just wanted to give parents an update that we are doing our contact tracing through our seating charts. And that is um, all teachers have those uploaded in Synergy so that the district nurses can um, go to those, um, those files at any time. So they have access to them 24 seven and they don't have to wait until the next morning when the teacher gets there. So they are doing their contact tracing on a 24 hour loop, they, they are working incredibly hard. Um, just to give you uh, another measure of safety that we do here, um, obviously we do this anyway, we take attendance for every period, but one of the things teachers can do is they can see if um, a child, for whatever reason, it's not told to the teachers, but for whatever reason, if their um, attendance has been marked out, um, people sometimes um, go on, you know, vacations or they have to go, you know, to a family emergency or whatever the reason is, we will mark that out on their um, attendance. Um, we also will mark out, of course, if they're having quarantine. So teachers are not told the reason, but attendance is marked. They know that if anything is marked and a child shows up, that they need to send that child to the office and we'll verify what is going on if maybe the child has come home early or if in fact um, have come back to school too early from quarantine or if maybe they've come back from their trip before they thought they were going to then you know the trip was shorter than before um, whatever the reason we'll verify it make sure that um, only children who are supposed to be in class are in class we do attendance codes here. If you go onto your parent view and you look at attendance, you will see different codes. I just wanted to explain to you the difference between an S versus a, a VS. S stands for sick, VS stands for verified sick. It's really important for um, parents to call the hotline 
make sure that um, they're verifying the sick. We do need documentation in some cases. So if in fact it is a quarantine, we're only putting that verified sick there if it has been a documented one, if we actually have the paperwork for it. Otherwise it's marked as sick um, because we were unable to, doc to document it. So just giving you an idea what the difference between those two codes are. Mr. Lister Licker, do you have any questions? Can you think of any questions parents might have regarding contact tracing or attendance codes? Well, you know, um, the contract tracing team, like Ms. Dolan said, is working very, very hard. And there are two levels of notifications that get sent out. Um, there's a real general one basically saying there is a potential exposure at your school, right? Which doesn't indicate close contact. Um, it's just a general um, statutory letter that has to go out. And there's another one indicating close contact. And so if you see the general one, um, they happen. That doesn't mean that your child has um, been a close contact to somebody with a confirmed case, um, but everybody gets notified accordingly. Typically, the um, students that were close by are notified before the general letter goes out. Um, so I would say that that is, you know, 95% of the time might even be greater than that, that they've um, already done the contact tracing and, and notified before they do the general letter. Thank you for reminding us about that. Um, appreciate that. All right, a couple other things we're hoping parents help us with, and that is please, please, please bring the Chromebook to school daily. Um, we are having um, the same effect here that is happening across our country, and that is a back order. We have a back order in Chromebooks. We have absolutely no extra Chromebooks on campus. And, uh, that We have maybe at most two extra ones per classroom and maybe not even all classrooms. So it is vital if you would like your child to access the material for that day that you're helping them get that Chromebook in their backpack and to school daily. Um, we really need all parents help with that. So thank you. Um, we also wanted to um, start talking about, we have a, an amazing PTO and foundation. They do tremendous work here at our school. Um, two years ago, this particular gala helped pay for all of our after school sports program. Three years ago, they paid for um, a dramatic update in the library. This is and so invaluable to us. Um, the, you should be getting information about the gala. We hope that you can participate in some way. And if not, um, we understand that as well. Uh, but more information will be coming out on that as we get closer to that date. I, I do have two words for you, Principal Dolan. <laughs> Dueling pianos. Ah, that's gonna be so much fun. It will be, and what a beautiful location. And it, from what I gather, um, it is outside. There will be some food stations inside, but the vast majority of it will be outside on the beautiful patio there. So um, it should be a fun night and, and really all goes to a great cause. Guess what? Uh, physical fitness is back. Woo! Uh, I know that I sure suffered from the COVID um, Came sitting way too much. So uh, it's great and exciting to be able to get out and be around campus and moving, but what a great opportunity for our students as well. If you look at the data that comes out of our campus, our PE teachers just rock in this area. Um, our students, a uh, greater percentage of our students pass this test than at any other school in Desert Sands. So, you know, we work hard at this. We believe in physical fitness here and um, we are doing our very best, though, in this weather to, you know, keep it safe. Um, we really want kids to hydrate. We're not pushing them, um, but it's important for them to speak up if, if you know, they're feeling that heat as well. It, it, it's been kind of rough out there. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Lister-Licker? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, I know uh, you were doing lunch duty a couple hours a day and after school as well, so... I can't imagine what it's like for our, our PE teachers all day. So just big oh, kudos to yeah. them. We've got um, something exciting coming up again. It's that PSAT. This is scheduled for October 13th, and it is for our eighth grade students. 
um, there's some data showing that students who um, are college, who are, who are preparing for college and want to prepare for that SAT will actually get a bump on that score every time they take a PSAT. So the district wide has determined that if we start in eighth grade, they do what in eighth grade, ninth grade, and 10th grade, 11th grade becomes optional, you know, and, but at 11th grade, if you take the PSAT, you can earn big scholarships to universities. But just taking it those three years, that's a 75 point bump on that final score. And, you know, that, that's a hard thing to do with just tutoring. You know, we go into those tutoring programs. So this is our way to try and help all students to prepare for the eventual SATs they take in the end of their junior and beginning of their senior years. So we're going to be sharing more information on that. It will be a very unusual day for our eighth graders because they will be in one classroom for that whole day, <laughs> or at least till lunch. So have you heard anything about this, Mr. Lister Looker? I have seen some homework help contracts come back in. So I know that families want to participate. And I have had the lovely pleasure today of walking about um, five of our wonderful sixth graders over to Ms. Manjal and um, for extra help today. And they were excited and Ms. Manjal was excited. Um, this is such a great opportunity for kids to get that one-on-one -on -one, um, just help from really qualified teachers. So if you would like your child to um, stay after school from 2.40 to 3.30, please make sure that um, you are looking for, there is a contract that was sent to everybody. If you can't find that contract, just shoot um, a counselor or myself or um, uh, Mr. Lister Licker, uh, a um, email, and we will get that contract out to you. It's, it's very simple. It's just stating the rules. Um, basically, kids need to be on time and, you know, their phone needs to be put away. They actually need homework. They can't, they can't go in there if they don't have homework. They can't go to the library um, to read, but they need to be in there with homework. And then it's very important if in the off chance you have to pick them up before 3.30, you need to know what room. So when you come into the office, we can call that classroom and have that child come in and uh, come in and meet you here in the, uh, the office. Otherwise, 3.30, we'll get them all out to that NPR gate and um, they'll be available for you to pick up at 3.30. Have you heard one, I'm, a, I'm so sorry. I'm always confused whether I should say FEV tutoring or FEV tutoring, but I'll, I'll let you. Oh, yeah. I was just going to ask you, what did you have, what do you know about the FEV tutoring? I know it's a service that um, is available 24-7. Students can access it through their Clever login. Um, and I've been in some meetings with, I'm not sure if they were tutors or if they were representatives from FEV or FEV, but um, they're very excited about helping students um, improve outcomes. Absolutely. Um, this is an amazing opportunity for our students, and we'd really like to see students take advantage of it. Um, there wasn't a, a lot of use last year, um, but essentially there are um, college students that have been hired. Um, they man these, um, this phone line 24-7, and they have been front-loaded with the curriculum so that they know what we're doing, and they should be able to walk a child through any problem. They, they can help them in science. They can help them in humanities. They can help them in math. I'm, I'm not sure if they can help them in cooking. <laughs> that might be interesting to find out. But um, definitely a, a great opportunity. Um, and students have access to it 24-7, Monday, Monday through Sunday. This is such an important topic. It's digital citizenship. And in our world today, what you put out in the digital world follows you. And, it, and it's an important lesson for our students to learn that they are developing a footprint. They're developing um, an electronic resume when they may not even be aware of it. So there is a um, we will be doing some mandatory lessons here at our school. Uh, if you are interested and would like to preview what those lessons look like, 
commonsense.org has that curriculum that we're going to be following, but there are some great tools for just parents. Parents can go and you can look up all kinds of different apps, which apps are safe, which apps would be age appropriate and movies, what movies are age appropriate. There's just a wealth of information there um, for you to look at and it's commonsense.org. I wanted to give everybody a heads up. We're so excited. We're at the very end of our diagnostics with our iReady. Um, we've noticed some very interesting trends. We're excited that um, students did not seem to uh, fall back as far as some people had predicted. So that's very exciting news. Um, every year when we run our schedule and put students in, the schedule does not, when the computer doesn't balance the classes out automatically. Um, that is something that has to be hand done. And we like to not, we like to hold off on doing that until we get our iReady data so that we know if a particular student needs to go into a particular type of class, that we have that information so that we're only moving students once and that we're not moving them twice. So um, students, will be coming home quite possibly with a new schedule starting tomorrow, if not early next week. And we just wanted to make sure parents knew that um, part of the um, DSTA contract is that we do do leveling. But here at our school, we will not level. And basically what I mean by leveling, maybe I need to explain that, is we're trying to make an average of about um, you know anywhere around 30 students or less per class. We don't want some classes to have 35 and some classes to have 25. And right now we actually do have that. So we need to level those classes so that they both have 30 in them. Um, that that makes the playing field fairer for all of our students. They they'll get equal amount of attention when they're in classes with, you know, that are approximately the same size. So, so we do do that. We just don't want to do that and then have to change students again when we get the diagnostic information. So we try to wait until we get diagnostic information and then make the appropriate changes and then the leveling. So um, you may have, um, we randomly select students that need to go into, you know, balancing those classes. Your child may have a new schedule and uh, we just need your support. All of our teachers are fabulous. All of our teachers are aware of this and um, have been prepping the students. So nobody should be behind in any one class. Um, they've all been kind of doing common work, so that it should be a, an easy transition for our students. Is there anything that you can think of to add to this, Mr. Listerlicker? You know, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we can do it all pretty completely. <laughs> Thank you. Hero. This is a very exciting program, and I don't know if students or if parents have yet learned how to sign up. And um, you can go in and create your own account and find out what points your child is getting. And, and Mr. Mr. Licker, I shall let you talk about this. Well, so um, we had a, a goal as a school of recognizing 15 students per teacher per week. And as you can see, we've exceeded that. The average number of hero points that teachers are awarding is 217 per week. So we are recognizing all of the great things that students are doing. Um, one teacher in particular, you can see there's a range of um, the amount of points awarded per teacher. One particular teacher has awarded 1,016 hero points. So been very active in the program with his students. And we have 51 people participating in the awarding of the points right now. So the cool thing about Hero Points is that um, we will be opening a Hero store here on campus, and those points can be redeemed for you know different incentive items. They can be redeemed for a free shirt day. They can re be redeemed for a dance ticket. Um, we are going to have brownies and some other awesome stuff that if they want to redeem for a snack, they can do that. Um, that menu of incentives will be shared with parents um, in, in a future Panther style. We'll get that out. Um, but you can see the exciting artwork um, 
hero store there that will be posted in the right side of our student store. Um, the hero account creation should be simple for everybody. That's just a setting in the system. Um, you can see the steps there, access.heropower.com. You're either selecting parent or student and creating an account. Um, there have been some issues where students are unable to create accounts. Um, I'm not sure if parents will run into those issues as well, but anybody can reach out to me to help troubleshoot that. Awesome. Well, it's so exciting and so much fun to give those points away. I, I, I love doing it. And um, the app works really well. The, it, we had some problems the first year we did this. So for the app to work well, and um, I think uh, students really enjoy being recognized for being the awesome kids that they are. Absolutely. This, this is, is your baby. Uh, this is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> so before um, I start talking about the new lost and found procedure, I want to draw everybody's attention to the snazzy new equipment that's down at the bottom of the screen. Um, we have a rolling clothing rack with bin storage um, available on the bottom and then a rolling rack of shelves that will also hold bins. So that pretty much constitutes lost and found 2.0 for Palm Desert Charter Middle. Um, and the process is going to look like this. So found items come to me basically and they get stored in this awesome um, storage setup. Labeled items get returned to students in their classroom. So we've really been encouraging everybody to label their stuff. And I can say specifically today, um, uh, Thermoflask was handed or Hydroflask, excuse me, was handed to me and there was a name on the bottom and we were able to get it back to the student. So that was kind of cool. Um, so labeled items go back to your kiddos. Unlabeled items land in the storage of lost and found there. I'm planning to have that out in the lunch area on a regular basis so students can come and look to see if their items are there. Um, they can always reach out to me as well if they want something sooner. Um, and after two weeks in lost and found to make sure that we're not um, basically building a Nordstrom rack or another store here at school. Um, after two weeks and lost and found, we do have to move those items on. So they will be donated, or if it makes sense, they, they'll be disposed of. Thank you. I, I am so grateful that you have taken this on. I know in years past, we would land up with mountains of unlabeled uniforms and water bottles and lunch pails and, and parents just so that you know um, when students carry those things around the their hands will rub that off so you really need to label regularly like weekly you should put a label on it um, i saw several the other day that we had to put in lost and found because the name is so it, it's just too hard to read we, we couldn't decipher it so um, label frequently is maybe a better way than just label. Label frequently, please. Please. So next week, um, we have our uh, picture day makeups. And so students should be still wearing their uniforms to school. And teachers will be releasing them from um, either their first or second period. Um, they'll go to the library. They'll get their picture taken. So we just wanted to make sure you were aware that's going to happen next Tuesday. So if you don't like the picture that your child has, um, get them ready to come on in on Tuesday. Ready for that darling school picture. Wow, um, thank you for uh, spending this time with us. It's a little bit longer than we normally go, but we just thought we, we would share all this information with you. and. As always, we are so grateful for all of you and all of the time that um, you spend trying to learn about our school, working with our students. Um, it is such a team effort here to help them be successful and we're just truly grateful for you. Um, Mr. Lister Lecker, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Well, I was just wishing that the text in that um, speech bubble was a little bit larger because I feel <laughs> like it should be a really loud roar. But um, like Ms. Dolan said, we really do appreciate all of you and, and the teamwork. The teamwork is awesome. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. And thank you for watching. Goodbye. Bye. -bye. Bye.